Hello friends, good morning. Welcome back to our channel, ELP Talk, General and Electrical Aspects. Today we have Mr. Praveen with us. He is an uh, electrical professional working in uh, IIT as a professor. And uh, he has very good knowledge, vast knowledge we can say. And uh, many of you may be already knowing him. And uh, he shared all his experiences from uh, uh, starting from uh, graduation and uh, we have, PhD and then for PhD and uh, is a uh, working experience in the in electric electric motors and other uh, industry and uh, the electric mobility lab in IIT Gauhati and uh, he shared all his uh, experiences uh, so we discussed very good stuff and uh, what are the different uh, projects he involved he shared his knowledge it's a wonderful wonderful session guys so don't miss this don't miss this video watch this video till the end you will get better understanding. You will get a lot of new ideas, new things, and a lot of um, different uh, aspects. Uh, and and uh, most of the electrical uh, latest trends and everything that you can get. So if you are uh, any graduate or a postgraduate looking for to looking to do any good projects or anything, then uh, you should watch this video so that uh, you will get some good uh, understanding also, and it gives a good uh, initiation to your projects and everything. Yeah, working professionals also can watch this video. They can get better understanding. Yeah, keep watching this video, guys. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Praveen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Yeah, first time I'm watching you. Happy to see you. Yeah, same here. <laughs> same here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Very nice. You? How things going on there? Yeah, yeah, it's all online, so mm -hmm. been difficult. Yeah, yeah, very nice. So since many days, I mean, not many days, many weeks, I'm trying to connect with you. <laughs> so finally, that today happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So how are things at your end? Yeah, my end also, it's good. Uh, working from home is going on, so it's very nice. Okay. <laughs> okay yeah I'm, i i get tired with this online mode of working but yeah. you need to connect with people you need them <laughs> i see i see most of the times uh nowadays uh, online only for connecting with outside yes. <laughs> yeah 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 uh, i i find like-minded sure. people like you uh, i'm always uh, trying to find people so <laughs> very mm. nice yeah praveen just uh, to say a few things about yes. myself uh, so I'm electrical design engineer and uh, I started uh, this YouTube channel for sharing the knowledge almost uh, seven months back. Uh, it's going well, almost 50 plus people I interviewed, many industry experts. So like that, uh, I'm approaching many people. Yeah, so it's uh, your turn, dear. Uh, so let's uh, discuss a few things about you and uh, your uh, educational background and all and who you are. So this is not the end, this is just a start for us. So in this video, we are going to discuss an inspiring journey of yours. Uh, I mean, uh, where you started your journey and uh, how you moved from one step to another step, uh, so that uh, it will give, give boost up to many professionals uh, who are in this, who are into this area. So that's what uh, my intention. And uh, mm -hmm. let's proceed here. Mm -hmm. So you are uh, uh, from basically uh, you are electrical engineer. So just. Uh, explore yourself and from which which part of country you are and uh, what are the things let's start with it. i think it is a good memory yeah. to you also to recap everything <laughs> yes 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 yeah it's been a long while <laughs> since i'm around so <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh so i if i answer your first question where yeah. am i from then i think it's almost a very very difficult question for me to answer mm -hmm. I think since the age of six months, mm -hmm. I have been traveling through the throughout the country. Oh. So I have spent first uh, 15 years of my life in Orissa. Okay. Then I was in Meghalaya for a long time. Okay. Then went to Himachal uh, for my bachelor's to REC Hamirpur. Now it's NIT Hamirpur, of course. Yeah. Then was in Delhi for my uh, PhD. Okay. Oh, sorry, M Tech, and then uh, went to Germany, worked there, did my PhD from Netherlands. Now yeah. I am in Guwahati. So, mm -hmm. so that's the that's how it is. 
Yeah. So, so most of the places you covered, you roamed. <laughs> yeah. So I have been, and, and I was happy almost everywhere. Yeah. And wherever I was, I think that was home. So if somebody tells me where am I from, uh, then I think I I'm from entire country. I <laughs> to the entire country to be my home. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Is your parents government employee? It seems like yeah, that. my 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 father was in university, so he retired from the Northeastern Hill University okay. as a professor of physics uh, quite mm. a while back. Okay. So they are now settled in Dehradun. Okay, so, okay. So yeah. the, <laughs> that is the uh, roots uh, in yours also, electrical and all physics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that generally the, that's what we also learn from first person parents. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very happy. Yeah. So you are a PhD holder and doctorate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very nice. That is the highest degree you have, right? Yeah. That's the highest degree I have. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you uh, we just uh, come from the PhD to the next uh, uh, below degrees? Mm. So I think uh, you did on uh, PM Motors and uh, three phase VSI. So can you speak few things yeah. about that and what it is and uh, like that? Oh yeah, my PhD was on design of permanent magnet motors. So okay. in those days, so in year 2000, in that decade, PM motors were the were, were becoming very popular because the first hybrid electric vehicle was launched by Toyota, the Toyota okay. Prius, okay. and and there was a lot of enthusiasm about electrification in in in, in transportation yeah. and pm motors were the key ones so that became a topic of my thesis as well okay. so there yeah we uh, i worked on designing of those motors optimizing them and testing them okay. and to see that how can we model them and come to a come to an optimized design very fast at that point of time in in, in those days so that was the main goal of uh, working with those motors and that was the main theme of my thesis as well okay okay yeah 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 so generally to uh, make the motors more efficient we are going for permanent magnets right instead of uh, giving another supply for the field that is the main yeah. intention right uh, yeah, to 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 not only just to make it more efficient, but to make it more power dense, to increase okay. the power density. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because in case of uh, vehicular application, you don't have the luxury of space. Yeah, that's true. So 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 you need a compact machine. Yeah. But yeah, if you look at the other end, which are the generators, so they are they have a field excitation, so they don't use permanent magnets there. Okay. Because there's no constraint of space. Space, yes, yes, uh, yes. Space there, so yeah. So you can go for a field excitation, and okay. it's uh, cheaper and also more robust. Okay. And and it's uh, cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one question, but generally magnets uh, due to vibrations are very high temperature. They get demagnetized. I mean, uh, what's your comment on that? Just uh, I uh, that's question I'm getting in my mind. Yeah. So, I mean, th those temperatures are extremely high temperatures. So when we look at the automotive environment, we don't mm -hmm. encounter those high temperatures. So okay. you don't get a uh, irreversible damage to the magnet. Okay. So, okay. so, so that's not a problem. It, they are very safe to use and that's why they are still uh, very popular, especially the rare earth magnets. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, generally, I mean, uh, there is some tendency that if you drop the uh, magnet from, there is a chance for losing and all. So in vehicle, most of the vibrations will be there. Is there no such things will happen? No, because okay. those vibrations don't reach the motor that much, you know, because okay, uh, okay. They, they are all very nicely damped and moreover, the magnets are very tightly fixed into the rotor. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's not that they are just moving randomly mm. and uh, okay. vigorously. That doesn't happen. Okay. 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 Hmm. So, uh, I mean, uh, in the lifetime, uh, at any time, we have to change the permanent magnets. I mean, or otherwise, we have to re-strength it, demagnetize it. Uh, any such cases required, or it's not like not like that. Can you comment on that? No, 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 no. no there is no need to re-strengthen the magnet. That's never done. Okay. Okay. Because... That's never done because the life of life of the magnet is much longer than the useful life of the motor itself so okay, before okay. the magnets give in something mm -hmm. other damage would happen to the machine okay, so, okay. so that's not a problem okay because i have so when i discuss with many people the first thing with permanent magnets or permanent magnet motors demagnetization of the strength the field strength will reduce so torque mm -hmm. the capability may reduce the range may reduce in the wrong run like that people are discussing so that's why i got this question no no that doesn't happen 
Okay, no. okay, okay. Yeah. So thanks for this uh, discussion. And uh, VSI, voltage source inverter, right? So can you comment yes. a few things on it? I mean, um, we have current source inverter, voltage source inverter. I mean, what is yeah. the behind it? Yeah. No, mostly in automotive applications, uh, we use uh, voltage source inverters. And the okay. reason for that is uh, the source is a DC, which is a battery. Mm -hmm. And the prime mover, which is a motor, is a three-phase motor. Okay. So if you have to convert the DC into three-phase AC, uh, then we use uh, an inverter. Mm -hmm. And the voltage source inverters are the simplest and the cheapest that we can have. Okay. And in automotive industry, it's all about cost. Yeah, so you have to keep true. the cost as low as possible mm -hmm. so we opt for voltage source inverters uh, they are robust technology very proven the controls yeah. are well understood so yeah. we usually go with them and for high power applications where currents are very high as well so we prefer to go for uh, voltage source inverters compared to the current source inverters even though they are viable alternatives i don't say that we can't yes, yes, uh, yes. but the trend is to use uh, voltage source inverters okay okay in this electric vehicle DC to AC conversion process, mostly the frequency mm. is this uh, like 50 or 60 hertz or any other very high frequency? No, that, would depend, that would depend, the fundamental frequency would depend on the speed of the machine. Okay. At what RPM is the machine moving at? Okay, so if okay. the speed of the motor goes up, then this frequency of the fundamental waveform also goes up. If the speed okay. comes down, then the frequency of the fundamental comes down. Okay. So this thought of, of 50 hertz or 60 hertz is from the industrial applications where the yeah, grid yeah. supply is either 50 hertz yes, or 60 yes, hertz. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in this case, uh, you have to imagine the speed keeps on changing continuously. Yeah, yeah. So we can't have a fixed frequency. Oh, okay. So yeah. inverters are getting, I mean, getting feedback and keep on um, uh, change, change it. Yeah, they keep on changing the frequency depending on the torque requirement and also at what speed you need to deliver the torque, mm -hmm. the frequency will keep on changing. Yes. Okay. Okay. So if that is the case, if you are running, if vehicle is running at a very high speed, then the frequency mm -hmm. will be high, right? In the case, in that case. Yes. So, yes. so the losses and everything may be generally a little bit higher when compared to mm -hmm. uh, low speed case, right? No, uh, if you see any kind of a motor, uh, mm -hmm. the low, in, in case of vehicular applications, mostly the low mm -hmm. speed, high torque regions of operations are of very low efficiency. Okay. Whereas higher speed regions have mm -hmm. higher efficiency. Okay. okay. So we just can't really correlate that uh, low speed would result in less losses and higher okay. speed will result in uh, higher losses because loss is a very non-linear complex phenomenon that's true and losses have many components so yeah, yeah. so so we can't make that very straightforward okay. statement for yes, yes 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 i can understand yes yes okay yeah. okay okay yeah very nice so let's uh, move to the uh, i mean uh, we are just touching upon few things uh, so that uh, people can better understand the, the different topics mm. what are the available okay mm. next uh, i'm just uh, jumping to the uh, your uh, M tech project, I mean, M tech energy studies. I think uh, you did yeah. uh, high temperature superconducting motors. Uh. So, yeah, yeah. generally, I see in superconducting generators, uh, superconducting motors, I didn't uh, aware of that. So, can you speak a few things about that? Oh, yeah. So, they, the motors, it was long back, I think, 99 when I worked yeah. on them. So, already over 22 years. <laughs> So uh, at that time, the idea was that uh, if you look at any kind of a space application, okay. so there by default, you have extremely low temperatures. Okay. okay. And uh, it's close to, <clears throat> to, to superconducting temperatures. So the motors that we were working with uh, were hysteresis motors. Okay. And, and, and the rotor was made up of a superconducting material. Mm -hmm. So I think if I still can remember, the composition was yttrium, barium, copper oxide, IPCO okay. materials. That's what we call them. Okay. And they were high temperature superconductors. It means they become superconductor at 77 Kelvin, oh, okay. uh, which is the temperature of uh, liquid nitrogen. Okay. okay. So, so we were then testing those motors to see their performance, their characteristics, their behavior. 
and the idea was to use it in some space applications okay. uh, because there you could maintain the 77 kelvin without any problem that's actually a, a very comfortable temperature in space application <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's considered okay. to be warm 77 <laughs> kelvin is a warm temperature there mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. so so th those motors make sense okay uh, but today you know even the superconducting motors are coming back mm -hmm. uh, if we look at the uh, e vitals uh, electric vertical takeoff and landing uh, yeah yes yes some aero, uh, aeroplanes uh, so, vertical takeoff is there yeah they call it as flying taxis in in, in loose terms but we <laughs> call them as e vitals okay so there you need motors uh, with very very high power density which are very compact and uh, can deliver high torque and high power yeah so people are revisiting the superconducting machines maybe they might become a reality uh, yes, in yes. The future i think tesla is planning for that right vertically take off yeah, there, there are many, many uh, Boeing, Tesla, Airbus, yeah. there are many, many companies and, and many startups as well who yeah. are focusing yeah. on that segment of transportation. Yeah, yes. These particular motors, is, is it liquid cooled or gas cooled? Uh, which one? These are uh, superconducting super motors and all. Generally, so what the is motors the time? that we the mm. motors that we worked and our experimental setup was that we had a container full of liquid nitrogen and we just put the entire motor into it so it was okay. immersed cool so it was okay. surrounded by liquid <laughs> nitrogen all over okay okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. wonderful project this is <laughs> advancement yeah okay yes. okay yes i'm just uh, next uh, moving to the your uh, graduation uh, nit so control of three phase induction motor so so generally i mean not only about your project can you give some uh, different uh, yeah, latest trends about induction motor controlling what are the strategies available methods available uh, can you speak on it okay yeah. yeah the project that you're talking about was done in 97 long yeah. long back so at that time we didn't have uh, many of the uh, new control technologies uh, or yeah. at least we were not aware of as best yes, yes. students uh, so it was just a simple uh, frequency based control so you keep on changing the frequency of the uh, fundamental waveform coming out of the inverter and then you change the speed of the motor a very simple uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. project okay, okay. Uh, if you see it from today's perspective at that time it was challenging but <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, 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 it may be easy <laughs> uh, it, it, it is something one can do in two three days four days you don't need to make a btec project out of it uh, anyway yeah uh, uh, the these days we use a lot of vector control strategies okay so if you go and look at high-end applications of induction motors yeah. in industry mm -hmm. as well as in automotive applications mm -hmm. then the common uh, techniques are vector controls uh, okay. and among the vector control the most advanced is known as direct talk control okay so in these techniques we what we try to do is that we try to decouple the magnetic field created by the stator and the rotor and try okay. to control them independently okay, okay so this gives us a kind of a uh, fast dynamics so the okay. machine can change its speed and talk very fast so the response becomes very fast and that's what we need for many applications eventually okay. for vehicular applications as well so if you want to press if you press the accelerator paddle uh, you want the response to be fast it should not be a sluggish one otherwise you feel uncomfortable <laughs> that's true so with with, with, with such kind of direct talk controls for induction motors, you can achieve that kind of fast response. Okay, okay. Generally, uh, all, all the models, I mean, uh, the flux generation and everything is uh, related to the, the way from which we are giving supply, right? For example, rotor, yeah, uh, yeah. say for example, in, the, in a squirrel case induction motor, so rotor is a squirrel case structure. Generally, ideally, we can say it is isolated from the stator. So, I mean, uh, mechanically it is coupled uh, on the shaft and all, but electrically it is separate. So, how we are able to control uh, the induction in that rotor? I mean, uh, can you just give an uh, uh, idea on that? You are, you because see, you, you are see, saying both are independently you are control. You are able to control. Generally, no, no, you, 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 you mimic that. In reality, uh -huh. that doesn't happen. But okay. you mimic a behavior mm -hmm. where it appears as if the stator and the rotor magnetic fields are independently controlled. But in case of an induction motor, yeah. they're not independent. Yes, the yes, rotor's yes. field is derived from the stator. Stator, yes, yes. Okay. So whatever you do to the stator side is reflected on the rotor side. That's true. Okay, but 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 then if you try to decouple them mathematically, okay. so the idea is that you can change the current 
faster okay. in the stator mm -hmm. so whatever changes that we see uh, like if you want to change the talk fast it means you need to change the current fast okay so how do you change the current fast so that means you need to do all the calculations mm -hmm. that for a given speed how much talk you need that calculation should be done fast and you predict that we need this much current now at this instant of time and in reality if you are using uh, if you, if you look at the stator you don't give current to the stator you give a voltage, voltage. To the stator yes, yes so then you have to recalculate the uh, voltage from that current okay that much and voltage is fed back okay yeah so how much voltage should the stator get to get this amount of current to ensure this stock at that speed okay, okay. so it's a reverse problem so okay. you know that you need this stock at that speed so how much current do you need from there how much voltage do you need now if you know how much voltage you need then you would know how to control the inverter yeah yeah and then you will do the switching logic accordingly okay. so all that is the uh, idea of uh, the uh, direct talk control so okay. you want to ramp up the talk very fast you want to ramp down the talk very fast you want to get a very dynamic behavior yeah. and direct talk control allows us to do do that okay okay generally inductor itself people will say it, the response is very slow uh, because yeah. that behavior is like that but in today's uh, most of the electric vehicles uh, induction motors also there i mean uh, generally how you can relate with that i mean with respect to the pickup or see, speed induction motors are good or any oh, other motors see all motors have uh, inductance if you talk about permanent magnet motors they also have inductance yeah, uh, yeah. If induction motors have inductance so wherever you have a winding or a yeah, coil structure true. you would have inductance that's true so that's uh, not a not a major issue mm -hmm. but we also have to see that when you talk about time constants a mechanical system always has a larger time constant that's than true. an electrical time electrical that's, system. that's true that's for responding so, it take time yes so maybe in an electrical system the time constant may be in few milliseconds yeah for the mechanical system it would be few seconds that's true so then the mechanical system won't even feel that delay of few milliseconds in the electrical system because it will uh -huh. get the desired talk uh, by the time it needs okay okay, okay. <laughs> got it so it's not a it's not a major problem okay yeah, i clearly explained <laughs> okay okay thank you thank you yeah and uh, so after that i think after you were mtech uh, i think uh, i mean you were for a couple of years uh, assistant professor professor associate professor and you are now professor right how is your uh, yeah. uh, teaching journey and your experience actually uh, with the iit or any other institutions oh it has been good so this is my first job in india Okay. so after working for almost 8 uh, 9 years in industry in germany i moved to the academics yeah and iit guwahati was the institution where i joined in 2009 june and i have been there since uh, it's over 12 years now yeah so now the thing is that i do enjoy the work it's uh, always exciting to connect with the younger generation it keeps you fresh and keeps you uh, motivated <laughs> yeah and plus yeah you get research students so you do many uh, research and uh, research projects and then you explore new ideas yeah. uh, which is again very exciting so all yeah. in all i would say that mm, it's a fulfilling job yeah yeah okay uh, how you will feel with connecting with young generation i mean uh, you you were seems uh, almost uh, uh, 1980s 1990s like that at that time no technologies are there how you were adapting with latest technologies and cope up with uh, The, the student phd students are mtech students are they are teaching you or you are learning from them generally what this uh, student uh, faculty relationship with you can you comment on that personally yeah. i would say that i do some teaching okay but mostly at the end of the day i end up learning more that uh -huh. that's what i would say okay because you see whenever I, you teach and somebody asks a question yeah then you're forced to learn to answer that question that's true okay so with every question that i am asked i learn so i can't say that it's uh, me who is teaching but it's them who teach me much more if i see collectively <laughs> that's true so, 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 that's so, so, true so, so that's how it has been <laughs> yeah 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 that what happens generally okay yeah. okay yeah Okay. Can you speak a few things about uh, e-mobility lab and uh, generally what it is and uh, what you people are doing and uh, any? Can you speak on that? Comment on that? 
Yeah, so uh, the the work on e-mobility started, I think, almost from the day one when I joined in 2009, June. Okay. So at that time, of course, uh, EVs and e-mobilities were a nascent idea in our country. So we didn't have much of work on that, but we started to do some initial work. Okay. And our idea or the thought was that in future, uh, that would become a key thing. And 10 years down the line or 12 years down the line, I see that it has become a uh, key word. Yeah. So as time progressed, uh, we became more and more confident about EV technology and e-mobility at large. And then we started to execute projects in various dimensions. So over the years, it started to grow. Uh, the more confident we became, we tried to take a bigger challenge and then so on and then so on and so forth. So yeah. that's how our uh, our journey started. So okay. today we look at many, many areas on e-mobility, right from the powertrain itself okay. to new mobility concepts like e-mobility as a service uh, to charging of the vehicles. And gradually, we are now looking at other dimensions like the uh, detailed environmental impact of this entire e-mobility or yeah. even the societal impact that e-mobility will have in India. So we are looking at those issues as well. Okay. Okay. Is it just a lab for the curriculum for the students or uh, is it for professionals? It's a research also? lab. It's a, it's, okay. it's a research lab. It's okay. a research lab. Okay. And we do experiments and we teach experiments to the undergraduate as well as PG students. So okay. that is also a part of it, but okay. it's predominantly the, the collective research activity is known as the e-mobility lab. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you, I mean, uh, there itself for uh, designing and uh, um, production manufacturing of uh, everything happens for motors, particularly vehicles. We, we design it, we design it, we get okay. the designs prototyped at different locations in the country because we can't have all the that, that, facilities That's true, at that's home. true. Yeah. yeah. So, designs are done here. Okay. Prototypes, we get them made from outside. And then okay. for small systems, we do in-house testing for bigger systems where you need specialized equipment and we again uh, okay. outsource it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think many companies, maybe in India or abroad, they may be approaching right for any particular activity. Or can you do this, do this like that? Uh, so, can you comment yeah. on that? Uh, I mean, uh, how how people are approaching? What are the general things they are uh, asking you people to do? Can you comment on that? Yeah. Over the years, we uh, are we have increased our industry interaction. So we have done lots of exploratory projects with them. Uh, so they are not pure product design uh, projects, but they are more of, can this be done? Is that feasible? So more okay. of an exploratory nature uh, okay. where we are good at being a university. That's so true. giving a precise product is not our core strength, That's but true. rather answering the question that, is it possible? Why did this happen? How can that happen? So the why's and how's are the questions which we can answer much yeah. better. That's yeah. true. That's so we are, true. we are, we are, we are doing projects which are focused around the whys and hows of uh, e-mobility. Okay. Okay. But if, if any, in the small startup or industry, if you have issues means they are coming yes. to you people, right? Yeah. Like yeah, I, yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Okay. And we, 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 we uh, especially like to work with startups because they have fresh energy, new ideas, That's and true. they're mostly by the younger generation. So you get to know a lot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's always always exciting to work with them yes that's, that's true that's true yeah can you comment on uh, smart chargers or uh, b2g technology or ev trains i mean it related to this uh, e-mobility uh, how we, these functions are going yeah on? the uh, v2g is uh, something very exciting because v2g if done properly mm -hmm. uh, it can convert the electric vehicle into a battery on wheels if you see it Okay. okay because okay. it can then the vehicles can be seen as a source of distributed energy storage and whenever needed uh, the energy from the batteries can be extracted and put back to the grid okay so so, so that's the core idea of uh, vehicle to grid integration okay. and this is very much feasible because if you see any kind of a vehicle a personal vehicle then 75 to 80 percent of the time it's standing somewhere it's yeah. either in a garage or in a parking lot. That's at, true. At the work that, that's true. So it's static. Yeah. Okay. So, and it has a battery in it. Yeah. And the battery has energy. Yeah. So why can't we extract the energy when the vehicle is not moving and put that into the grid when the demands increase? 
Okay. Or if you consider a scenario, let's say I start from my home uh, morning seven o'clock and I reach my office by seven thirty-eight. Okay. Okay. And the car is at the parking lot of my office, and if it's V two G enabled parking lot, so I can plug my vehicle. Okay. And the 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 office space is powered by solar energy. Mm -hmm. So as long as in my I am in my office, my battery gets charged with the solar energy. That's right. And in the evening when I drive home, my battery is full. Yeah. And by the time I reach home, I would have consumed 15, 20 percent of the energy. I still have the 80 yeah. percent of the uh, energy in the battery. Yeah. And I can plug my home to the car battery. And my home load can be met by that battery's That's uh, energy. That's amazing. Company. Yeah. So then what have we done? Actually, I transported solar energy 15, 20 kilometers from my office space to my home. Yeah. And I transported solar energy from one time duration to another time duration. It was charged during the day yeah. when there was enough sun. And yeah. now it's being used at night when there is no sun. Okay. So the energy got transported over time and distance as well yeah so all that is feasible so your vehicle is no more just a means of transportation but as i said earlier it's battery on wheels that's true uh, and if that is the case generally there is number of cycles uh, battery life depends on number of cycles right 2000 cycles yes. 3000 cycles like that yeah. how many cycles we yeah. are recharging recharging so in that case uh, how the uh, lifetime of battery will reduce if we are drawing a uh, do for the meeting of our energy needs in the house what you can you comment yes. on that you see that can be mitigated to a large extent if you control the rates of charging and the rates of discharging so okay. if you avoid fast charging and fast discharging you can mitigate that to a large extent okay. uh, plus if you see uh, a new phenomenon is about to become a reality in india it is a reality in many other countries around the world okay very soon it will be in india as well that we will have dynamic pricing of electricity yeah and if you uh, observe very carefully then from usually from 5 p.m onwards till evening 10 p.m the electricity demand is maximum I, and yes. soon uh it would be expensive at that duration okay and now if i take this uh idea which i explained so i am I'm charging it from my solar panels which is virtually free electricity that's true uh, which i got at a very cheap rate and i'm consuming it when the grid electricity is expensive so I'm okay. not taking from the grid, I'm taking from my battery. So there's a price differential. Okay. So okay. whatever degradation I would have from my battery will be okay. offset by the gains that I will have here. <laughs> okay. 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 So yeah. the economics would work out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, in that case, uh, I mean, uh, when we are using a battery, vehicle battery for, our, for feeding our home, in that case, simply we can bypass all these circuit, only DC voltage. Can we give to the inverter or what is the consideration in those cases? Yeah, I mean, uh, you need to have a switch box. So when you click, uh, connect the battery to the home, so mm -hmm. you have an inverter, of course, because yeah, most yeah, of yeah. our domestic loads yes, yes. consume. Uh, yes, actually, they are mostly DC devices, but our plug points are all AC. Yeah. So uh, we can uh, have an inverter and that inverter feeds the uh, mm -hmm. domestic line. So, no, so that's yeah. how you will have. It's just an automatic switching mechanism. Okay. Okay. In so India, in, in India, uh, the existing electric vehicles or any such uh, e-vehicles are supporting this feature for drawing power from the vehicle or uh, any... On a, as, a, as a demonstrator, there are some uh, at the lab scale, I would say. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it will take some time before we see that really happening because we don't even have that many electric vehicles on road first. That's, that's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and charging infrastructure is still a problem. Okay. So once you have an ubiquitous charging infrastructure, then this feature would make sense. Now people are worried about where to charge my car <laughs> rather than that, connecting that's my true. home to the, <laughs> that's the vehicle. True. Okay. It may take uh, more We have a different time. problem right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah maybe yeah. maybe a decade. Yeah, yeah. Because I see many many people are having socket in the car itself, so they can consume the energy for uh, cooking at the outside uh, in uh, any on the on the road somewhere. So some yeah, some, yeah, some yeah. things I see. So some some small picnic kind of things, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, some nice features to have, but it's not really uh, V2G or V2H technology. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. V2H means the to home. Vehicle to home. Vehicle to grid, another V to G. Vehicle to V to G is vehicle to grid. V to yeah. X is vehicle to home. So yeah. actually, it's V to X. X can be anything. Okay, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. 
Okay, can you comment here uh, wireless charging related? I mean, uh, is there anything such things uh, applicable in this V2G or V2? Uh, yeah, wireless charging is a reality. Uh, mm -hmm. In India, we don't have wireless chargers for vehicles uh, okay. yet available. Uh, there are demonstrators, of course. But uh, if you see an autonomous vehicle, then this wireless charging makes complete perfect sense because okay. once your vehicle runs out of battery, uh, runs out of uh, energy, so it will just automatically go to the nearest charging station and dock itself there. And it okay. has to be wireless. Otherwise, you need some human being to come and connect it and so yeah, on. Yeah, that's true. If you want a perfect autonomous system, then this is the way to go ahead. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, in that way, it makes sense, actually. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you comment a uh, little, little, little bit about uh, your experience at Netherlands, drive to train innovation, like PMSM motors and all? I mean, yeah, it was, it was a, yeah. it was a very good experience. Actually, that uh, company was a small uh, company with 25, 30 people, okay. uh, but a lot of exciting work happening there about uh, new types of drivetrains uh, for the for the hybrid vehicles at that time it was hybrid yeah, vehicles yeah, yeah. Uh, now today we talk about uh, full electric vehicles okay. but yeah it was uh, it was a wonderful experience the team was great and ended up learning many new things yeah. and it has helped me in my uh, research career at iit and as well okay. as uh, in teaching so it's actually the culmination of uh, various technologies that I worked in Europe and the things that I learned uh, is uh, now helping you. Which we use yeah, here, yeah, yeah, which are happening mm -hmm. here. Okay, okay, very nice. Uh, it's the same way. Elmo CAD automated design software related. Can you speak few things about that? I think. Oh yeah, there we were working on a on a very different challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. At that time, the computing powers were not as they are today. That's true. So to design it, to design and optimize any motor, it used to take a lot of time. Yeah. So the idea was that can we develop algorithms which can reduce the time to design a motor quite a bit, and yeah. can we make the entire process very automated so that uh, the human intervention is as minimum as possible? So you can just yeah let a computer do it do its job for three four days and you don't need to supervise it yeah. so, so so that was the goal with which uh, we started out and yeah i would say that we achieved quite a bit of that dream okay. uh, it's still an ongoing exercise we that's true, that's are true. extending those ideas here yeah, in our yeah. e mobility lab as well yeah. to make it even more automated and and today we have machine learning and uh, yeah. AI becoming a reality. So we are exploring whether we can use AI and machine learning yeah. to, to design motors for, for different applications and reduce the time to uh, design the motors. Yeah, yeah. It seems that you are an all-rounder. You, you started developing the programs, you started using the programs and uh, designing the programs. <laughs> yeah, many, many oh, things. I'm it's no i think i was lucky enough to be surrounded by people who had expertise in all this field so i ended up <laughs> learning a few things the, yeah yeah because generally electrical engineers core electrical engineers they may not like to do coding i mean uh, i mean the programming or developing those things they may not be interested why i should write c yeah. code uh, being electrical so they may think like that mm -hmm. but yes uh, those uh, electrical related things the electrical people only can develop and uh, learn better yeah okay and i think uh, you, yeah you we are... should avoid that compartmentalization mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. should we should mm -hmm. look more at interdisciplinary approach that's and true should uh, there's a core area of expertise and then we should keep on adding subdomains to yeah. expand the uh, the the area of work that should always happen yeah yeah that's a good idea and the people should think like that one yeah and uh, yeah. I think uh, this year technologies, I think uh, you are a co-founder. I, I think this may be your baby. You are, you, so can you talk about what, yeah. what this uh, institution here, about? Uh, yeah. Here, this, the, the goal was to develop some training programs because eventually we came to the conclusion that EV technology is going to expand. Yeah. And that would mean that the industry would need a lot of manpower. Yeah. And that manpower has to be trained fast and effectively and with that vision uh, we started this uh, enterprise okay and yeah we have trained uh, close to 1500 people so far okay okay uh, and we will continue to do so 
Okay. So, so, so that's the idea of uh, training people and make them future ready. Yeah. Now, okay. how successful we were or we will be, uh, only time would say. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I mean, where it is located? Is this like uh, it's, nowadays... in the, it's in the IIT. It's in the IIT. Okay. Okay. In this the like a... park of IIT. Okay. Okay. It's in the incubation center. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. General, I think it may be paid one, right? It's like a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are nominal. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the the charges uh, are pretty nominal, and anyone can uh, pay them very easily, and then okay. uh, join it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is this like online mode or direct uh, physically visiting? It is, uh, it's a combination of both. It's in online mode. Plus, then we have some partners where people can go and get some hands-on experience as well. Okay. But due to COVID, the the hands-on part has come to a come to a stop. Yeah, so that's it's true, exclusively that's true. online now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, Praveen. So till now, I think most of the topics related to your education, your career, and uh, in the way in you are uh, linked with the different uh, aspects we discussed. It. So now let's discuss uh, in general uh, general things about four or five general topics are there. So let's mm -hmm. discuss about so so, so that uh, it gives the overall good understanding about electric vehicle, motors, and all our nowadays linked topics. Yes. Yeah. So generally, uh, what are the latest technologies or trends in electrical engineering? This is, uh, can you comment a few things about that? I have uh, four or five topics like that. Yeah. Okay. General so, way, yeah, okay. if any, anyone thinks uh, uh, I should I should be updated means what are these general things nowadays available? Hmm. Uh, you see, the uh, important topics in electrical engineering uh, are electrification of course electrification yeah. of transportation yeah uh, it's in the classical electrical engineering domain i would say then uh, we have the smart grid technologies okay. which is becoming a reality now worldwide including okay. india okay. so that's again a very key area then we have renewable generation renewable sources of uh, electricity generation okay. that's an important topic so these are the themes on classical electrical engineering and then okay. of course we have uh, machine learning and AI, which is again a very important topic, but then it has to be uh, applied to a specific domain. That's true. So that's if you true. have a domain expertise, mm -hmm. and then you learn these tools, yeah. then it becomes useful because learning those tools without a domain ex domain expertise Useless. doesn't make sense. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So these are some of the major trends, I would say. Yeah, that's that's nice. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and uh, generally, what are the probable electrical industry areas that can create a good job opportunities for the uh, engineers or uh, maybe graduations or PG or it can be PhD also. Generally, what are the in the, uh, areas in the electrical industry they can create more opportunities? Can you comment on that? So automobile sector is definitely one uh, yeah. with this okay. new EV technology. Okay. Then there are uh, classical power uh, equipment manufacturers Okay. like generators and motors and so on yeah. so those are the companies and then uh utility providers like the distribution power distribution companies when the market gets deregulated yeah. which will happen yeah. in near future yeah so power distribution companies power generation companies transmission companies okay. would like to have lots of uh engineers with knowledge of smart grids yeah okay uh, a general idea of what smart grid is so that will become very important. Uh, plus, uh, we have now this uh, thing around for a couple of years, the Industry 4.0, uh, yeah. which is the smart factories. So this is, again, all about electrical engineering, production and <laughs> manufacturing, yeah. linked with IoT and data analytics and AI. So this is, again, a big area of, of work and yeah. a big area of uh, explosion in jobs that, I see in near future. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the thing yeah. is that for to, to succeed in any one of them, uh, the graduating students need to expand their base of knowledge. So they should not really be in silos that yeah, I am an electrical engineer, so I don't know much about communication or I don't know anything about I software engineering. It's not like that. So yeah. It should be, yeah, it should be a mix of everything, a nice blend of everything. And yeah. then you become an ideal candidate to build a career in the areas which i spoke about yeah that yeah the, the, that is the i mean we should be interdisciplinary with uh, all yeah. the other department yeah, yeah a domain knowledge surrounded by other areas of knowledge and then you become a 
uh, a person who is useful for the industry. That's true. That's true. That is the thing going on nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, if any student want to pursue research, uh, then what are the areas for MTech or PhD? Can you comment on that? Uh, oh, yeah. there, there, there are many. If you look at any of the IITs, so they provide, they, they give courses on very, very exciting areas. Uh, okay. In almost all the areas that I talk, talked about. Okay. So smart grids to EV technologies to industry 4.0 to AI, data analytics, uh, yeah. big data. I mean, these are really the key areas where students can go and do their masters. So they have yeah. to really get a good score in gate and then those doors open up. So, so yeah. and, and, and they should pursue them, I would suggest. Okay. Okay. You yes. yeah. should not be in a hurry to, to enter a job market right after the bachelor's because bachelor's degree will give you uh, a kind of a domain expertise, a broad That's overview true. of the yeah. field. Yeah. And with masters, you will get that specialized knowledge and yeah. that blend will help them build a good career. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, one thing, apart from great, uh, is, is there any other ways to enter into IIT for MTech? Any, uh, many people? No, uh, for MTech, it's uh, exclusively gate. Okay, yes. okay, okay, okay. Or let me say predominantly get there might be a couple of uh, seats here and there which have lateral entry, uh, like industry sponsorship and so on, but it's predominantly gate. Okay. If one okay. needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so okay, general discussion about uh, electric vehicle, what are different motors we are using these electric vehicles? Can you comment on that? I mean, I in yeah, it depends way. on the on the on the vehicle segment. So today, all, almost all the two wheelers use permanent magnet motors. Okay. Uh, when we come to four wheelers, then uh, the, it's permanent magnet motors and induction motors. Both okay. are there, but predominantly okay. permanent magnet motors. Okay. Uh, but when we come to bigger vehicles like buses and so on, then induction motors also start to make a lot of sense. Okay. So, so it really depends on the uh, vehicle segment. Okay. And in, uh, now developmental efforts are on to get some new uh, topologies of motors like synchronous reluctance and so on yeah, uh, yeah. to be used. So, so they, I think they might become a reality in a, in a decade or so. So the yeah. choices are <clears throat> huge uh, on different types of motors, but today it depends on what vehicle segment are we looking at. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Generally, single phase or three phase DC or AC. I mean, three, uh, three. can you comment Exclusively, on it? Okay. All, all motors are three phase AC motors because they are more power dense and more efficient compared to okay. rushed DC motors. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gen generally, what about BLDC? BLDC is exclusive for two wheelers or three? No, BLDC is also a three phase motor. Okay. It's okay. just that we call them as brushless DC motor because their behavior is like a classical yeah. brushed DC motor. Okay. But that does not mean that they are DC motors. They are three phase AC motors. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 The name is a misnomer, <laughs> but they are, they are a three phase motors. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So very nice, uh, Praveen. So, so many things we discussed. But personally, I am so happy to discuss with you. And uh, thanks for agreeing for and, uh, having you. your presence today. I can say this is not the end. I, this is just a start for our inter interaction. There are many things yeah. uh, we are going to do. I have different sessions yes. also. At different times, maybe uh, one hour or half an hour, we will discuss many topics. Thanks, dear. Thanks a lot for your Thank time. Thank you very much. Dear. Yeah, bye. We'll Thank you for day. having me. It was, a, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, bye. Have a good you. day. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Pramit sir, I stopped the recording. Yeah. It's very nice okay. here. <laughs> Such a so, great so I hope it was okay. Yeah, very <laughs> nice. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I always fail to discuss with the, the very old generation. I can't say you are old. You are still young. <laughs> 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 but generally, I love to speak to those people. I always like to at least sit for sit and talk for five minutes. That's a great uh, because mm. you people see many, um, particularly from experience. I want to learn other others' experience. That's what my intention. So that's mm -hmm. the theme of this channel also. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. And, and who are the general audience of this channel? Generally, uh, my intention, my intended audience are uh, the graduated student, fourth year or third year. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, first uh, one or two years experience at electrical professionals. 
generally hmm. these are the uh, my, my main audience actually uh, hmm. most of the people from uh, other countries uh, some uh, other countries people also watching mainly from hmm. india south southern and uh, world of gujarat area people are uh, mostly uh, are subscribers to us and they are watching these channels and uh, hmm. good thing is that most of the people voluntarily coming and uh, asking for interview that is uh, uh, because some expertise okay. is there in, with some people for example some protection mm-hmm. knowledge is there in your transmission lines they want to share their knowledge so like that uh, nowadays they are coming yeah mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's a good journey for me to say uh, last year october i started it's going well i personally okay. i'm getting good sleep with these uh, things <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. so so how many interviews have you conducted so far so far around 50 plus uh, different uh, oh, okay uh, different professionals mm-hmm. of um, um industry exp who are working in industry and if any student done any good projects in college i am also going to them and uh, personally mm-hmm. myself visiting any nearby locality or any electrical plant or any electrical uh, maybe m- machines or any repairing or substations so lot so i am just trying to uh, uh, show the things to the to the fellows in that way mm-hmm. myself also growing a, like a good professional yeah yeah it's a, it's a very good initiative and any activity done very earnestly uh, leads to lot of learning yeah yeah no the, doubt in that no yeah. doubt in that yes yes mm-hmm. yes yes yeah apart okay. from that i am managing my job at itachi abb as a transformer design engineer that's what okay. uh, my actual profession around 7 uh, years mm-hmm. i am doing this at uh, transformer designs mm mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Okay okay so <laughs> so so you uh, when did you graduate uh 14 2014 2014 okay yeah. from which yeah. institution uh this is from uh, uh, the, the private college in uh, ap andhra pradesh polarity engineering okay. college mm mm-hmm. yeah okay yeah. so then how did you come across me <laughs> I, <laughs> it was <laughs> through linkedin through linkedin <laughs> through linkedin through linkedin yeah. okay. i am using this linkedin uh, uh, most vigorously not like you but at least uh, somehow i am using <laughs> okay okay yeah so, so i am approaching uh, like minded people uh, so i am asking them uh, if they are, if they are able to spend an half an hour or one hour if they said okay then i am scheduling an interview at any time of their convenience mostly <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i hope you found this discussion to be yes useful, yes. So. yes 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 pravinji yeah. yeah 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 okay okay so i thank hope you. your audience will find it useful thank you That's very much true. so once yeah. you yeah. have ed- edited and put that online so yeah, do let yeah. me know yeah yeah sure yeah. sure sure i will share you yeah can okay. you share a, a couple of photos of you i can use it for uh, thumbnail or bag uh, uh, yeah thumbnail. i'll send them to you i'll yeah. send them to you i think i have your email address or, yeah, yeah, or maybe yeah. you can type your email yes, address yes, yes. in the chat I can box type. i can type you yeah and then i'll send the link to the photos yeah okay okay thanks dear bye thank you thank yeah. you bye yeah, yeah. bye thank you friends thank you thanks for watching this is about uh, this uh, video so this is not the end we are going to do many more videos in the coming days yeah so if you are watching this video for the first time then do subscribe to this channel so that whenever i am uploading videos you will get notifications you can simply click and watch it yeah thank you we will meet in next video guys bye